Yo, YouTubers. It's Friday night. And I'm at the Stone the, Stone the Crows virtual pub. Do you see it's Simon's missus having a drink? It's impossible for me to not drink. I can't I can't handle it. <laughs> Simon's gone to the toilet or something. Well anyway. Oh yeah. Oh. I don't know if you watch these like, but you know, there we go. The, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> I love nothing better than seeing a happy couple enjoying a drink. But anyway, as the light readjusts, you see the way it readjusts the, the camera? It must have an automatic thing, must not it? I don't know. It is automatic, isn't it? Alright, so we've got a beer to review. I'll just turn the volume down. And um, I haven't had a drink today, guys. I've got quite a few beers in, but okay, I've got like you know Joseph in the Bible when he when he stored all the grain and all that kind of stuff. I guess what I'm getting, guys. I'm getting a homebrew kit as well. I've ordered a homebrew kit. I'm going to be brewing my own beer for the very first time in my entire life, and it's all on the way. Everything's on the way. I haven't got the ingredients yet, like, but I've ordered the kit. And I've got all my bits and pieces, I'm going to do it like, I'm going to make amazing beer. And if any of my viewers are interested, I'll send them out to them, you know what I mean? The number one in a dog brewery, you understand? The number one in a dog brewery. Anyway, let's get back to the review. <laughs> I haven't had a drink since Tuesday. Right? That's like Wednesday and Thursday without a drink. And um, let's do a time check, by the way. As you can see, I'm watching that live at the moment. Um, it's 19.35 on the 20 Friday, the 26th of March, 2021. Just in case anyone's interested, any time geeks, any... You know, I'm Doctor Who, you know what I mean? I am the Doctor. All right, I've got a, an, an interesting beer for you tonight. And it's a bog-standard affordable beer. Well, it's about... I think it was... I think it was what it was either one pound nineteen or one. I think it was one nineteen. I think. Very, you know, not like some of the the Belgian beers or what I've been trying. Like, I mean, some of them are just under four quid. You know what I mean? So we're back to Earth tonight with a beer I've never tried in my life, and it's an interesting package. Let's see what we've got. Drum roll. <laughs> I don't even know, it effers, effies, effers. I'll just turn the sound down in case that I am actually sort of watching whilst um, I don't want to miss nothing at the stone the crow, but you can watch it back, can't you? But anyway, I was just going to drink beers that I've already tried tonight and just watch the, the, the YouTube thing, but I thought, no, I haven't tried this. And let, let's get a review in the box, eh? I'm sorry, guys, you know people are a bit disappointed when I'm doing beer reviews. The reason I'm doing beer reviews is I'm kind of like, um, I just enjoy drinking every now and then, and while I'm doing these first time experiences, you know, and everything's all right, my ulcer's okay, and, um, you know, I'll be on a diet soon, I'll be brewing my own beers, oh dear. But this is what it is, Ephes Draft, right, or Ephes Draft, if anyone knows how to pronounce this, please tell me, and it's a fresh draft beer taste, well we'll see, won't we? We'll see, won't we? And look at that, it's even got like a like a foil seal on the top. I like that. You know what I mean? I like that. Right. I just thought that looks interesting, doesn't it? A bit of effort, isn't it? You know what I mean? More than your average can. And I picked this up in um Oh, what's it called? B and M in, in town in Birkenhead. B and M, right? That's where they. I don't know if they, if they got them in in, in a at a B and M near you, right? But apparently it's a European beer, right? Now it's five percent, which is just right, isn't it? The Heineken benchmark. Five percent, right? Now let's see what it says on the on the can. It says uh, expertly brewed, imported, right? So it's brewed abroad. Expertly brewed for a light, hoppy aroma and refreshingly smooth, rich taste, just like beer, fresh from the brew house tap. 
five percent um, country of origin any more information it says imported you know, let's have a look turkey I have tried the Turkish beer haven't I it's, um, I can't remember what it was called it was in a bottle definitely not tried this one have I guys but it's a Turkish I didn't realize that all right let's have a look ingredients water malted barley CO2 hops and yeast sounds fairly pure um, no more information um, is that in English there protect from sunlight oh it says drink cold yeah it's and Anado, Anadolu Efes Istanbul Turkey origin origin Turkey so it's brewed in Turkey it says premium quality ingredients the packaging's great uh, the Mediterranean beer fresh draft beer taste and you see the little, even the can's got like um, a little curve, like a little beer can. See the way it's got like, it's, it's actually shaped. It's like a wooden can, like a wooden cask, you see. Like the, like the, you know, the, the grain of wood on it, like like an old wooden barrel. And, and I just I thought, wow, and then it says the Mediterranean beer. 5%. And you can see there, it's, um... <laughs> It's got this thing on it, like which is which is cool, isn't it? I thought that was cool, like. Let's get let's get straight on with it, eh? Let's let's um let's remove the, the uh, seal. So you know no grubby fingers have been all over the top, have you? You know if you want to drink out of the can when you, if you're on the streets and you're a wino and you you know <laughs> if you're a wino on the streets you just drink out the can, you know, say sealed like a milk bottle top or something. I like that. I thought that was cool. That's a little souvenir to go with my little book of um I've been collecting them, you know, the labels off the cans that you can remove. I collect them in a book, you know. I've got a book of dreams. I write my dreams down and um, I, I stick the labels in them now as well, like, so. Because I, I, do, I do dream about beer, drinking beer. There you go, FS Draft. Get on with it, lad. Let's get on with it. Let's see what we've got in the can. Hasn't exploded all over me. This is proper chilled. Proper, proper, proper chilled. If anyone from Turkey is watching me, um, <laughs> au revoir. I am coming, Dali Vu. Don't know what to say. Like, all right. Well, look at this. Seems like a typical kind of good old-fashioned beer there. This might be my last um No, I did get a couple of Belgian I got a Belgian beer to review and two German beers to review, so I'll try and fight it tonight. But well, anyway, look at that. Looks good. Golden. See the old bubbles. The little spaceships leaving planet Earth. You know, have you ever seen that film um Missions of Mars? It reminds me of those little pods all leaving the planet, like, you know what I mean? They all leave Mars, like, in these little pods, and they'll go, whoosh, mission to Mars, like, go ahead, <laughs> let's leave the planet. So it's proper golden, it's like a typical beer. Not much of a head, but my fr fridge is really cold, so it's very rare that that happens on these normal beers, you know what I mean? Like I say, I'm watching the Stone the Crow kind of. It's like it's like a virtual pub, you know what I mean? During these lockdowns and everything, I wouldn't go to the pub much anyway, you know, guys. I only go to the pub mainly. Um, sometimes I go to my local rock pubs for you know Christmas or New Year, just to have a night out or something like that kind of thing. And um, I usually go to watch football matches, you know, watch Liverpool play on the big tellies in the pub, and, and you know, because everyone's screaming and go mad. It's like it's it's a great atmosphere watching footy in a pub. You know what I mean? But because of all the lockdowns, you know. So this is the only pub, you know what I'm saying? Like, anyway, let's get the smell. Yeah, it smells like a sort of... Like a typical beer, maybe lager type thing. I don't know. Don't know what to expect here. It's 
smells like a nice quality lager. Nice. Opelia, as the Vikings say. Nothing spectacular. It's wheaty, malty, just right. Um, not too gassy. Like I say, these are only a pound, one pound nineteen or something. I can so. I just wanted the usual bevy, you know what I mean? With no, um, no frills. Um, yeah, I'd say that's that, that's like a nice quality lager. It doesn't taste like a bitter. It has got a little bit of a bitter flavour. Like. Quite gentle and biscuity and smooth. Not very gassy. It reminds me of the uh, Love Lane beer. It reminds me of a nice quality lager. I don't know though, you know. Some people might know. Creamy, by the way. You know when I rate these beers. I'm just speaking personally. Whether I like it or not. Or whether it'll do me like, you know what I mean. Right? Um, I don't see myself as a real reviewer. Because, like I say, it's just a first time experience thing. Trying things, right. And really, the, the actual ratings are irrelevant. You know, some people actually do... Reviews and don't do ratings, do they? You know what I mean? They just tell you whether it's okay or not. Like, right? So, whatever I say, if you ever try a beer after I've reviewed one, guys, and you're disappointed, and you think that roller coaster ride said it was amazing. You know, and I mean, like, if it's really dire, because I've had a couple of people like on a couple of beers I've reviewed and I've said it's okay, they're going like this. I thought it was awful. You know what I mean? Well, it's nice that it's not like I say. There's nothing any like. It's a typical beer. It's a typical like a lager. And there's nothing in, like, you know, that some of those Belgians have tried and it's, they're like, there's something like warm and you're up immediately and all that. There's none of that. It's just like, it's like a nice refreshing drink. And the more, it, I, I take it, it's 5%. I take it, it's going to be like, the more I drink, the more I get well -eyed. Gentle, delicate, and the biscuity maltiness is 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 there, like, and but it's very delicate. And there's no extras. There's nothing spectacular going on. But I've got to say, it's very refreshing. Um. <laughs> It's alright actually. <laughs> it's actually alright. Yeah, it reminds me of a really nice lager. I can't understand why they just call it a draft beer. And it does it does like feel like um it feels like it's in a pub. It does. It's got that pubby freshness to it, like. Um. Yeah, I like that. As a, as a lager lout, you know what I mean. As a lager lout, I'd call it a premium lager, like. Um. Yeah, it's one of those drinks. There's nothing spectacular going on in my brain with the first taste and all that kind of thing. But I would get well either if I've done a few of them. I've only got two two cans of this, so I'll be interested to see what it's like after the second can. <laughs> I mean, I've got a, I got the last bottle of Love Lane Lager. I loved it, like you know, the Love Lane from Liverpool, the, the brewery from the craft brewery from Liverpool. I went into one of the shops, Home and Bargain, and I, I, I intended to buy a few of them, like, and they had one bottle left on the shelf you know they've got like packages you know where you got a glass and two bottles and it's like five quid because you're paying for the glass kind of thing 
And uh, there was not, they, they had them like packets, like, you know, with the two bottles of Love Lane beer, like, but they didn't have, you know, the single bottles of lager. And I was kind of disappointed. So I thought, ah, oh, and I bought the last one. So what I'll do is I'll do a comparison to this, but straight when I finish this, I'll try it in comparison, like, because that's what this reminds me of. And the water's nice. There seems to be a little bit of, like, some kind of, I don't know. I mean, if the ingredients aren't telling lies. There's something there that's, like, sort of, to, like a mass-produced thing, you know what I mean? It's got the mass-produced vibe about it. It's, it's quality, but I would say it's craft beer, you know what I mean? But they say, look, they say, um, fresh draft beer taste. Um, they're not making any bold claims, are they? And it's imported, and it's Turkish. You see, it's like a copper colour, they can like, and it's like a little barrel in that way. <laughs> Yawn, you boring bastard. <laughs> Everyone watching going, oh, so what, but I like that, you see, I thought, I've seen that on the top of the can, I thought. I, I'm like a magnet, you know what I mean? I sort of can't walk away from these. I don't know, Asperger's, call it what you want, you know what I mean? On the spectrum or whatever. I'm like a magnet, I see something mad that I haven't seen before. And like, it's like the lid of a pot noodle, you know what I mean? <laughs> Asperger's. <laughs> Sniff, I haven't got a cold on that, by the way, guys. You know, no signs of them, um, you know what. I'm really miffed though, you know, they've had a law and they're saying um, you might not be able to go to the pub in the, in the future because unless you've had the jab and all that. I got offered the jab because I'm over 50, you know what I mean? I'm 56, right? And they, they offered it me, like, you know, saying, you want to come in for the jab? And I was like, nah, I'm all right, like, you know what I mean? But it means I might not be able to go abroad, might not be able to go to concerts, all kinds of little silly things, like, so... I can play live in the street, guys, can't I? I can still go out and play because I'm not planning on playing gigs in any venues, do you know what I mean? Think about I've used my head. It's like some kind of prophecy, that, isn't it? Pro I've been preparing to be a live performer in the street. Social distancing and everything, like. And I'm getting me a homebrew kit. <laughs> so this will be like a tap room here, you know what I mean? I'll be brewing my own fresh... I'm going to be do some, doing some gluten-free beer, by the way. So, like, um, both my sisters and my brother, they've all al got allergy to gluten. Right, I'm the only one out of the four of us that hasn't got an allergy to gluten, right? So, I'm going to make gluten-free beer the first brew I do. I'm going to make sure it's gluten-free. I'm going to put a lot of effort into the flavours and all that, and they can try it, like, you know what I mean? They can, they, they, wouldn't it be interesting to see me, me siblings do a beer review on YouTube? Number one in a dog brewery. See, I'm going to sell beer in the streets. <laughs> right, I'm already feeling merry, you can tell, can't you? You can actually tell, can't you, that I'm feeling merry. Oh, I'm actually liking this. This is kind of like... Um, it is like foreign beer. It's like foreign beer. It reminds me when I was in Amsterdam drinking a Heineken, actually. Turkish, eh? Ah. Yeah. Oh, as beers go, you know, it's like straightforward, head down, get a beer down, yeah. Here's the cum shot. You see, it looks fairly topazzy, doesn't it? You know, like imperial topazzy look. And, you know, there's no hair that's gone, it's like just little bits of bubbles, not like. No, I'm quite impressed, you know. And I'm feeling quite. I'm feeling quite happy. I feel quite happy actually. Oh man, I had something I was going to talk about today. I had a little, um, I, I had a story in my head, like what I planned for to, to speak about tonight. And I can't remember now. What have we done so far in 19 minutes? Oh, what was it? Something comical I had to talk about. No, I don't know. I don't really, um... Right, we'll do the Rockabye Baby there, look. Like, you see the gravity factor? I'm learning a lot of things, you know, guys. I'm really learning. I want to get my beer perfect, you know what I mean? 
You see the way, you know, I did a review a while back and I just shook the glass briefly and it was like so heavy that it was a German beer, wasn't it? It was like, so it's like, woof, 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 and just fly out the glass. Look at that, man. It's like staying in there. You know what I mean? It's not, it doesn't want to leave the glass. It's like, it's got something going on that, that like, this is, these are things I'm learning about beer that like I just never, you know, because I'm Asperger's, you don't see it the same way as, as like a normal person. I mean, I want to get into electronics, you know, making effects pedals and things like that, right? And man, if I watch like programs, like, you know, telling you how to make effects pedals and doing electronics, right? Until I actually do it myself physically, I, I think loads of things go over my head with electronics, right? I have actually made a transistor radio on a course once, right? You know, we, we, you can see that, it looks all right, can't you? Kind of golden and that. But yeah, anyway, we made these transistor radios on a course, you know, like an electronics course, when I was 16, 17. And my brother was there as well, right? And both of us made our radios. We actually had to solder, you know, I mean, a proper, legit transistor radio, and we had to put, like, all the resistors in and the transistors and everything and all the, you know. And we did actually test it. Remember, like... What happened was, um, in the course, right, so if I can make a transistor radio that works, right, I can see, I can obviously make an effects pedal, can't I, guys, you know what I mean? But if I watch guidances on, you know, people making pedals, and once they start talking the lingo about, like, electronics and stuff, it goes over my Asperger's brain, you know what I mean? And I have to do it physically, myself, and mentally to absorb what's going on, right? I remember making these radios, right, and, um, you know, it was like, there was loads of us in the class all doing everything at the same time, and the teacher was like, saying, right, now put this resistor in now, and you know, well, no, it's like proper, like, it was a course, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it was one of the rare times when me and my brother were side by side, out of school hours or whatever, you know, after school and that way. And um, he made this, and I made mine, and, and, you know, he made this successfully as well, you know what I mean, right? So it means, you know, you haven't soldering and all that, you must be, you know, you must be skilled, what's me to do that, right? But the problem was, right, when we tested them, at the end of the lesson, we just finished making our radios, and it was the very end of the lesson, and we all tested our radios, and we all, they all worked, and we tuned, and, you know, tuned into, like, Radio City or whatever, like, got the sounds out of it and everything, they had a little built-in speaker and everything, yeah. So we know, me and my brother know that we did actually successfully complete them radios. We did actually make a radio each, right? Then the following week, well, or the following day, and the, you know, the next day in the lesson, because we had the whole day, we got in, and he was like, right, it's time to test your radios again properly, right? And you know those on the on the desks, on like um, on the desks, you'd have these like plugs, you know, like a, like the red wire and the black wire, right? And you plug these things in, and, and all the power comes from these like sockets on the desks in an electronic classroom, right? And what happened was, what I think happened is, uh, my brother plugged the wires in wrong because he was colour blind. Right, my brother's colour blind, right? So if you you know what a red wire and a black wire, they look the same colour to him, you know what I mean? And I'm sure he put them in the wrong terminals, right? And anyway, I I plugged my radio in and blew it. It just blew, you know, when you had like the they were fucking oh. <laughs> Sorry guys as well like Try not to swear, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no. It's YouTube, I'm not monetized, it doesn't matter, like. Anyway, you can tell I'm like, this is like lager, that's I just swore, like, there's the proof, like. As a scouser type Baconian close to Liverpool, saying that word, effing this and effing that, it's, it's fairly normal, really. But anyway, the fucking problem was, <laughs> might as well get it over with. Yeah, I'm sure he put the wires in the wrong terminals. Do you know when you have like a crocodile clip and you connect it to the battery terminal on your radio and instead of putting batteries in, right? And I plugged my radio in, right? I switched it on and it just went, just went off. You know what I mean? I was like, huh? And I honestly, I swear down, this is like honestly no way of a lie. All I did was say to John. Oh, give us your radio and let's see if it's like, you know, and I put, because it's the only, we were sitting next to each other, we were both using the, t the same terminal, you know, the electronic terminal. So I put the crocodile clips on his radio and switched this on and that blew up as well, right? <laughs> it's just blasted out like, 
and we took them to the teacher and he was going, you've blown them guys, I don't know what you've done, you've blown them, like, right, and it could have only been one reason, it could only have been, because I know I wouldn't have done that on purpose to my own radio, right? And I know I certainly wouldn't have done, oh, John used to say, you blew my radio on purpose, man, you actually blew it on purpose, like, I was like, John, why would I do that, come on, man, I didn't even know, like, I wasn't even sure mine was completely blown, you know what I mean? But the, the, the truth is, we were the only kids in the classroom that blew our radios up. As soon as we just finished making them. You know what I mean? We just finished making the things and we both blew them up. Like, well, I blew them both up, but I didn't do it on purpose, right? It's the only thing I can think of. Because when he plays um, snooker, you know, if he plays snooker, oh, John, right? He, he, um, he sees, like, the brown ball and the red ball exactly the same. And they both look like black to him. So, doesn't that make sense, guys? You know, if these wires on them terminals, you, you must have done, like, electronics in a, you know, in a physics lab or something like that, and you have them things on the desk, you know what I mean? It's like a plug socket that goes into the thing, and then you've got a crocodile clip on the end, you know what I mean? But we did actually successfully make them radios. We did finish them, and we did work, we got them working. Right at the end of the lesson prior, you know, we've just finished all the soldering and all that kind of stuff. And obviously, we, we, we had to take them home, you know, like, like, <laughs> they were like finished. They look like proper radios with the dials on them, but they were completely useless, you know what I mean? <laughs> but we didn't, um, <laughs> we didn't listen to that much radio anyway, apart from, you know. <laughs> But he always said I blew his radio up and I didn't, you know what I mean? Alright, let's get on with it, like we're only um, 26 minutes, I get half an hour on this camera. I'll tell you what, I'm not even liking this when I myself, personally. Right. It's like a nice pub lager. Um, I'm trying to think what it reminds me of. Mm. It's like a German beer, to be honest. I actually like that. Quite astonished. It's quite sweet. It's not too bitter. But yeah, man, when it comes to electronics, I can make pedals and stuff like that, anything like that, right? I've got quite, but when it comes to brewing beer, once I just start out, guys, it's all over, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm definitely writing the will. I'll get an insurance policy. <laughs> Once I start making my own beer. So if anyone's interested, put you know down below, say, I want I'll buy some of your beers, Bruce. I'll send them out for free, you know me like. The number one on a dog beer, Indiana Johnny. After me owl man, Indiana Johnny. Indian Pale Ale. What about that for catchy? Is that catchy or what? Indiana Johnny on the label. Number one on a dog brewery. Indiana Johnny. Indian Pale Ale. Brewed in Birkenhead. I keep checking because like, it gets to 30 minutes all over. Right, I'm going to rate this right. I see it like a bog standard beer. Like a bog standard lager, but I'm very happy. And I can see the quality of the water, mate. Looks alright now. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10, I like it. £1.19 a can. Um, B and M, that's where I got it from. Turkish beer, Efes. Cheap budget. Can't beat it. Not bad. 8 out of 10. I like it. Alright. <laughs> Let's finish it. I can watch the um, stone close. But I'm back at the pub. Get back to the pub. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later.